I'm Jewish. I'm the real guy. So you try to try Jewish. Yeah, we the Jews. I think I'm Jewish, man. You're not so Jewish. called blacks, Jewish. Latinos, Native Americans. I, I, we the I, I, Jews. I, I, you see these black people out here? We the real Jews. That's right, son. You feel me? Really We're the Israelites. This conversation is done. I'm from the tribe called Zulu. I'm, 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 I'm from the tribe called Zulu. See these Israelites. black people out here? I'm from the tribe called Zulu. I'm, I'm. I'm, I'm from the tribe called Zulu. We the real Jews. I'm from the tribe called Zulu. I'm, 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 I'm from the tribe called Zulu. See these black people out here? I'm from the tribe called Zulu. I'm, 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 I'm from the tribe called Zulu. We the real Jews. I'm from the tribe called I'm from the tribe called Zulu. See these black people out here? I'm from the tribe called Zulu. I'm, 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 I'm from the tribe called Zulu. We the real Jews. I'm from the tribe called Zulu. I'm, 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 I'm from the tribe called Zulu. See these black people out here? I'm from the tribe called Zulu. I'm, 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 I'm from the tribe Stand up, you need a real dude Come and say that I want to open up with some um, News before we get into the class Don't worry, can I? It's going to be right Um, I want to open up with uh, a clip that states uh, how protesters are feeling about what's going on in the news. Ha! The word of the most I was getting out, I'm grateful and thankful for that. And y'all are going to see great things in the earth. You're going to see a lot of atrocities in the earth amongst our people. You're going to see more death of blacks and Latinos over and over and over. This is the sign of the times. These things have to happen. The most I said, in their affliction, they shall seek me early. Our people will not repent until they get afflicted. That's what we're seeing. We all got to understand that's the most High's program. You can't change it. You can't vote your way around it. You can't march your way around it. You can't eat watermelon around it. You can't throw chicken around it. Just go with the program. If God says, that's it. Now, let's watch this clip. Give me um, what the protest is thinking about uh, the so-called white man. Hit me! As madness was breaking out all over Ferguson, I thought to myself, I gotta be there. Is, is America a racist country? Fuck yeah. Totally racist? Hell yeah. To the bone? You racist. Why? Because you white. If I'm wearing racist? Yeah. Could, could a black person be racist? Nope. It's impossible a black person be racist? Yep. But if you hate white people, does that make you racist? We don't hate white people, y'all the devil. Is this a racist country? Yeah, yeah. Missouri, we right? not racist. Your kind of racist, though. My kind? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, a racist country. Totally racist country? Totally racist. Man, America is built on racism. Because when y'all go back to y'all hotel room, they're going to be like, oh, the nigga with the, the rag on his face is funny. Yeah. You can be my friend in my face, but when you get around your peers, I know you call me a nigga. Do you think that's what I do? Yeah. Have, you, have you experienced racism? What? Race? What? Are you, uh, is he man, black? Man, oh is my God, what are you black? talking about? Is he black? Bro, I didn't got this. Let me tell you this. Has let me tell you this. Has he's he ever left let me, let me if Have they, you seen if, any violence since you've been down there? If they wanted to, if they wanted peace, have you seen any would, violence since you've been down there? Cameraman, have you seen any violence since you've been down there? What's not people. peaceful this about this? What's this not racist. peaceful? Why are you guys here? Why are you guys here? To fuck shit up. We here with the shit. To fuck shit up. Does the facts matter? Or should we just indict him? Yeah, they should have, man. He he know, man, he did wrong, man. He should have been indicted. He should have been fucking killed, goddamn. Should, should Darren Wilson be executed? He should yeah. be hung. Straight up. Yeah. On some real shit. What should we do to Darren Wilson? Kill him? Man, I, you know what? I would have gave Darren Wilson the same treatment as a young brother out here who did the same thing. Get. What does that mean? Expedited justice. Is there, is there, has there been justice? Hell no. Not at, Fuck. All. Not at all. No? Hell no. no. Not they even one bit. Honestly. Yeah. You didn't opinion. go to trial. We like, ask you. You want my honest opinion? I yeah. want you to know. I don't, I don't know the answer. I want to find out. No, 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 we, no. It didn't go to trial. This it didn't go to trial. The world is in uproar. How the fuck don't you know the answer? How the fuck don't you know the answer? How? The whole country Dre. is in a uproar. For the simple fact that you don't know the answer, it's fucked up. Go join them. 
Don't join them. What the fuck are you interviewing us for? Come on. Fuck him, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Right, I thought I was being. I thought I was, yeah, my nigga. Mike Brown. Why do they keep calling him a thug? He's not. Was he what. a thug? Nah, man. Even though, even though he went in that in that uh, liquor store, man, and he that don't, guy, does that, that matter? They don't make him a thug, man. It don't matter at all, man. And he was a good dude. Barack Obama's been president for six years. Man, come on now. Has he, what's, what has he done to stop racism? You know what? And that's where I'm going to end it at because I don't have nothing to say. I don't got nothing good no, to say about we're, the president. We're, we're, what has Barack Obama done to help the black people in America? Shit! Not shit at all, man. Man, I don't know. We don't know. What's he done for you? What's he done for you? Nothing. Not a damn thing. Let him know. Let him know. I'm a Jewish person. The only thing is, the only thing is, I'm I'm Jew. I'm the real Jew. I'm from a tribe called Judah. You're not Jewish. I think I'm Jewish, man. You're not Jewish. I pray three times a day. You're not Jewish. I I eat kosher. You see these black people out here? We the real Jews. You feel me? Not really, no. Yes. This conversation is done. Hit me! So get up and get, get, get down. 911 is joking, no town. The word is getting out. Give me John 3, 3 and 5. The word is getting out. Now, we might have not have liked the way it came out and all of the anger and strife and contentious talk. However, John 3 and 5, please. Who's reading for me? Officer Liam? The book of John, chapter 3, verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. The first thing we all got to understand is that we must be born again of what? What did it say? Except what? Except a man. So, verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water. Wait. What is the water we must be born of? Because some of you in here, I know some of y'all are uh, uh, Christian Baptists. Lutheran, Catholic, some of y'all in here creeping around. I know it is. It's all right. We're going to fix you. What is the water that we must deal with? Mm, brother with the plaid shirt right there. According to uh, Ephesians 5, 26, it's the word. Let's read that, Ephesians 5, 26. That's the only way we can get to the kingdom. The water is the word. Read that. Come on. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26 that he may sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word the washing of water by the word the word of God is what cleanses your spirit not water regular water give me that in first Peter 3 please because some of y'all in here I know in the back of your mind but what about the water baptism the water the the literal water baptism was of God and it was symbolic for the time of John. When you ask yourself, did Christ ever dip anybody? Who knows the answer? Did Jesus the Christ ever, I want to raise a hand who knows the answer. Did he baptize anyone in water? Christ now. <laughs> Brother with the plaid shirt. I see a hand in the spirit. Yes, you. I'm talking you. Your spiritual hand went like this. John 4, verse 2. Right. Let's read that, Leah. Pay attention. John 4, verse 1 and 2. The book of John, chapter 4, verse 1. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not. Jesus Christ never baptized nobody in no water. Never. I'm going to say it again. According to that, he never baptized people in water. So what is the phenomenon with water? It is a phenomenon. Give me that in 1 Peter 3.21. You know what I want? Yes, sir. 1 Peter 3, verse 21. I want all y'all to get it. This is for you Christians, you hide-and-seek Christians who, who send us emails about, can you dip me in water? No! We ain't dipping you in no damn water. You go in a crackhead, you come out the water, a wet crackhead. It did nothing for you. Here's the proof. First Peter 3, verse 21. The like figure, whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. So the apostle Peter said, yes, baptism does save you. But watch this. Not. Wait, not. Not what? The putting away of the filth of the flesh. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. What is he talking about there? What takes the filth off your flesh? Water. He said, that's not the baptism that saves you. Read. But. 
The answer of a good conscience toward God by the re resurrection of Jesus Christ. But the answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. What gives us a good conscience towards God if we do what? Keep the commandments. That gives you a good conscience in Christ. That's the baptism that saves you. You getting dipped in water, here you are meth head getting dipped six times. You walk out, come out the water all crazy as hell. I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Blame, blame, blame. And the life is the Jesus God raised the life is his resurrection. Our people are crazy. It's a phenomenon. The white man has created a phenomenon phenomena in the earth. Remember that song? Phenomena. Do, 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 do. That's what's going on in the earth. So now, back to John 3, please. John chapter 3, verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit. And of the Spirit. What is he talking about? And of the Spirit. Is it Wap ba ba loo da ba wa bam boom. Is that what he's talking about? You speaking in tongues, rolling around, foam frothing at the mouth, like some of your grandmamas do. What is he talking about? Right here. Yes. <coughs> I can't hear you. Turn the mic on. John six sixty. Why is his mic? Mic is on. Is that because? John six sixty three. The word. Let's get that. John six sixty three. Come on. John chapter six. Verse 63. Now, I hope all you brothers are writing this down. Sisters, too. Write these scriptures down. It, it is the spirit that quickeneth. Write this down. The word quickeneth means converts or changes. That's what the word quickeneth means. Go ahead. The flesh profiteth nothing. Right. Sin profits nothing. Go ahead. The words that I speak unto you. Here it is. The words that I speak unto you. They are spirit. They are spirit. And they are life. And they are life. So when we go back to John 3 now. So we went to these precepts. Because that's where it says precept must be upon precept. It helps us get an understanding of a particular verse that we're studying. Go ahead. John 3 verse 5. Jesus answered. Verily, verily I say unto thee. Except the man be born of water and of the spirit. Meaning the Bible. Be born again of the laws of God and Christ. That's what all he's talking about. Go ahead. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You can't enter this new kingdom that's coming upon the earth if you're not willing to cleanse your mind with the word of God. You cannot enter this new kingdom. Come on. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. He's referring to sin. Go ahead. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Come on. Here come. Marvel not that I say unto, said unto thee. Don't be shocked that I said unto you what? Ye must be born again. Ye must change your ways. That's what born again means. Change your ways. He said, what you shocked for? Go ahead. The wind bloweth where it listed. The wind blows wherever it wants to blow. Go ahead. And thou hearest the sound thereof. And you hear the sound. Go ahead. But canst not tell where whence it cometh. But you can't tell where the wind comes from. Go ahead, watch this. And whither it goeth. Or where the wind goes. You can't tell, or oh, the wind's blowing this way, it's going that way. You can't tell that with the wind. Go ahead. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Meaning when this word goes out, you don't know who it's going to touch. That's why when you look at the video we just looked at. All that confusion of our people, F you, I, we hate you, you the devil. Then you hear one brother say, we the Jews. So that's a shock, because you didn't know out of all of them that the word started to touch him. You thought he was as crazy as the rest of them. But he got a little sense. He has not fully woken up. He still needs direction. But the Spirit has touched him to understand that we are the real Jews the Bible speaks of. You mean understand that? Yes, sir. All right. All right. Let's look at the next clip. Give me Ferguson met with racists. Uh, yes, that's it right there. No, I just want to read it. Look what it says. Blow it a big. Ferguson March for Justice met with display of, of a melon, fried chicken, a 40-ounce beer, and 200 racist protesters in rural Missouri. That thing's funny as hell. Esau met Jake and started throwing fried chicken and watermelon. Y'all be thinking I'll be making this stuff up. It's actually happening. Because here in New York, you know, this is a, what kind of city is this? It's a... 
what they call a progressive liberal cities. No, no, don't throw chicken at the Negroes. But some of y'all, I was talking to one of the captains, like working around Esau Rich. Because some of y'all got these jobs. We work around rich white folks. And the rich white folks don't fall under the same, uh, what's the words? The same laws that we have in, uh, the same restrictions that we have in the, mm, uh, the public, public job, and public job, civil jobs, things of that nature. You know what they say? You can't speak against gays and lesbians in certain jobs. You can't speak against. You can't make racist statements. But when you rich work around rich white folks, right? Rich white folks don't have those restrictions. They say what they want to say. So the brother goes to work. He's all upset. I'm like, what's wrong? He said, they started saying, uh, the niggas is marching with chicken. I want to punch them in the face. I said, brother, calm down. Don't punch nobody in the face because if you curse them out, they're going to fire you. If you beat them up, they're going to get you arrested. I said, that's to stir you up. You chose to work there because you make a little extra money. You got to put up with it. What you going to do? Oh, I'm going to march for justice. That don't work. Now, so look at that display of melon, fried chicken, a 40 ounce beer. That thing, is there a video to this? Go down. But this is down in AACP. They all marching. Go down. Let's look at the pictures. There's no video. They had the, the Confederate flag. The man had the white sheet on his face. This is Missouri. We're going to go to Missouri. We're going to light it up down there. Come on, let's see. Look at that. Wait, what did I say? Hands down. Go to work. Say, niggas, you don't like to work. This is, this is your friendly neighborhood white man. Psalm 7, verse 11. The book of Psalms, chapter 7, verse 11. God judges the righteous. God judgeth the righteous and we are the righteous. Come on. And God is angry with the wicked every day. And God is angry with the wicked every day. So who said God don't get mad? He doesn't get mad at a church lady. God, what? You've, have you forgotten the flood? That he killed everybody on the planet except Noah and his family and their wives? God gets angry. Was that it? That's, that's it. Go to Psalms 10 and 2. Psalms chapter 10, verse 2. The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Y'all see that? The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. That's what we're seeing on the news. Go ahead. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. So the, the Bible says let them be taken in the devices they have imagined. So all the corruption, the laws, the bending of the laws that Esau has set up is going to backfire on them. Go ahead. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire and blesseth the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. The Lord abhors the covetous, but Esau blesses them. Read. The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. So you thinking the white man going to seek after God? He's not going to seek after God. He could care less about justice and judgment. Go ahead. God is not in all his thoughts. The Bible says God is not in all his thoughts. Go to chapter 17. Psalm 17 and 8. Psalm 17, verse 8. Keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. When it says keep me as the apple of the eye, that's talking about, David's talking on behalf of Israel. We are the Lord's favorite. He yes, he created all nations, but we are his favorite. And amongst us, he says the elect. That's what he's really talking about, the elect of Israel. We're the apple of his eye, his favorite. Go ahead. From the wicked that oppress me. From who? From the wicked that oppress so me. So the Bible's telling you we are oppressed by the wicked. Come on. From my deadly enemies. From my deadly enemies. How deadly? We're getting shot and killed in the street. It don't matter for video cameras filming. Go ahead. Who compass me about. Right. They compass us about. Go ahead. They are enclosed in their own fat. With their mouth they speak proudly. With their mouth they speak proudly. From there. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to CNN. Watch this panelist try to argue in favor of Eric Garner. That's what it's talking about. Let's see what's, what goes on here. How long is this video clip? Now, if you look to the right, hold on. If y'all see to the right, see the little boy right there? Right there, y'all see his face? That's the little boy that got shot. He was holding a, um, a toy gun. Okay, we ready? Let's go. 
And what, what was the standard? What did they have to decide? You know, I don't even know if I can put my legal hat on because, quite frankly, I'm just so stunned by this because the standard, Brooke, is very low. In front of the grand jury, it's probable cause. Do you know what that means? That basically means a crime probably occurred. A crime probably occurred. We're not talking about innocence or guilt. We're not talking about beyond a reasonable doubt. We're talking about the lowest legal standard that we have in the legal community. And so having uh, seen this video several times, when I put my prosecutor hat on, that clearly to me looks like an excessive force case. It looks like a death. It is uh, like like an excessive, a death by excessive force. I think what's fascinating, quite frankly, is that I've been advocating for body cameras on police officers, as you know, Brooke, from the very beginning, for years now. Her argument is she's been uh, trying to find, uh, file paperwork to have all law enforcement wear cameras on their that uniforms for the past five years. She says here, problem. this is proof With, uh, that that isn't even going to work, because this is on film, and he still was not even indicted on this. That's what she's saying. So y'all could get mad if you want. It's not going to change anything. Come on. Hosea chapter 5, verse 15. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In their affliction, they will seek me early. Read it again. I will go and return to my place. So when the Most High left us, he left us, he returned to his place. We went into hard bondage, we went into slavery. Go ahead. Till they acknowledge their offense. We have not acknowledged our offense yet. We have not acknowledged our sins as a people yet. The Lord is waiting for what number of people to acknowledge their offense? That's right, go ahead. And seek my face. To seek his face means study his word. Repent and seek his face in the Bible, go ahead. In their affliction. In their affliction. Go ahead. They will seek me early. They will seek me early. So, brothers, I want you to understand that's God's plan. You see these things in the news, it makes you mad. But the Bible has prophesied in their affliction they're going to seek me. Because if we don't afflict, get afflicted, guess what? We're not going to seek the Most High. When does blacks and Latinos seek the Lord? When we got jobs, we got cars, we got homes and houses, we traveling here, we doing music videos, all of that. Who's seeking the Lord? Ah! America, only in America. Most of us said, all right, y'all living it up good. I'm going to jack you up down there. I'm going to show you. Even your friendly neighborhood Jello pudding man, what's his name? Bill Cosby. How many people said he raped them? 30 women said he raped them 30 years ago. One was a 15-year-old girl that was in a Playboy mansion. I said, what the hell is this? And nobody says, it. why was a 15-year-old girl, a minor, in the Playboy mansion? So I'm looking at this ain't right. Then I'm like, in this country, they say you are innocent, until proven guilty in where? In a court of law. Oh, that don't apply to black people now. That don't apply to us either. We just all jacked up here. We are guilty through the media. You guilty? All his endorsements, they say, ah, fire Cosby, get rid of him. Y'all gotta see what's going on in the country, but I love it. I love it. Y'all got to start to like this thing. I know you're gonna say, oh, I, I, I hate my own people. Yeah, it's not hatred. I wanna go home. I see the writing on the wall. We about to go home. Y'all sitting there mad, you wanna go march? And let me tell you something about marching. Let me tell you about that. There's a clip with Rudy Giuliani. I'm glad he said it because now I can say it. He said what one of the tactics law enforcement does is when you march, they send undercover officers, black, white, Latino, Chinese, men, women, in the midst of you. I was, I was opposed, by the way, to declaring a state of emergency. I thought it created a psychological atmosphere what I would have done is I would have masked my police secretly. I would have had twice as many, three times as many police as they had, but I've had it hidden all over the city. And the minute it started, they'd have been overwhelmed by police. And they'd have been arrested at the first moment they threw something. Not after a half hour or an hour of having a cooling off period. Would you have had your police use tear gas on the protesters? Uh, I would have had them do anything necessary to stop them. So when you, you, you see people, oh, look, everyone loves us. It's every, they just love us. No, idiot. They ain't marching because they love you. They trying to see what coon is going to throw the bottle. Like that nigga, he just threw a bottle. And lock him up, he threw some watermelon. That's what they do. They infiltrate amongst you and go march. You think that white boy next to you, yeah, they're wrong. They're evil. Yeah. And you see white people love us. And you're, you're idiots. 
I sit back, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah, here we go. Giuliani made a big thing on the news tonight. Big thing on Give me uh, Isaiah 30 and 5. Isaiah, the 30, verse 5. They were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them, nor be in help, nor profit, but ashamed and also a reproach. Oh, that's beautiful. Read that again. They were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them. This is what you're seeing on the news. Our people are ashamed of what white society is doing. They're ashamed because our people have given their hearts and souls to white America. And they said, what's going on? What about justice and judgment and love for all mankind? What about the love of Jesus? What about it? Go ahead. Nor being help, nor profit. Nor being these people on white society is not a help unto us, nor a profit unto us. Go ahead. But a shame. But they are a shame unto us. And also a reproach. And a reproach. This is what we're going, this is what you're seeing on the news. So in, in that being said, I want to go back to Hosea. Let's, we come right back here. Let's go back to Hosea uh, 515 again. <coughs> Hosea chapter 5 verse 15. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense. So stop. The Lord said he will go and return to his place. He's going to remove himself from us until we acknowledge. So there's a, there's a dispensation of time. Why aren't all people acknowledging? Why? Stay right in the same chapter. Read verse 13 and then read down. Hosea chapter 5 verse 13. When Ephraim saw his sickness and Judah saw his womb, then when Ephraim into the Assyrian and sent to King Jerob, yet could he not heal you, nor cure you of your wound. Because like then and like now, we keep on turning to our enemies to help us. We think they're going to heal us. We think that because you see some white people laying in the street and block uh, the West Side Highway, they're with us. We, the Lord is to say, I'm going to keep on beating you over your head until you realize you have no option but me. So read that again. When Ephraim saw his sickness and Judah saw his wound, then went Ephraim into the Assyrian and sent to King Jerob, yet could he not heal you. Yet he could not heal them. Hold this, go to Lamentations 4. We're going to come right back here. Lamentations 4, 17. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 17. <laughs> As for us, our eyes had yet failed for our vain help. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. That's what we did before. Remember, the Bible is redundant. The same things keep on happening over and over. We're to read these things, learn, and say, we have to do something different. We have to do, we keep as a people, we go back to our enemies. And the Lord said, until you acknowledge that you need me, I'm going to keep on killing you. I'm going to let these enemies kill you and break you down. That's how Israel's always been. Go back to Hosea. Hosea chapter 5 verse 14. Read. For I will be unto Ephraim as a lion and as a young lion to the house of Judah. I, even I, will tear and go away. He said, I, even I will tear and go away. That's why he's putting the spirit on these cops to do what they're doing right now. So I'm going to tear and go away. Read on. I will take away and none shall rescue him. And you can vote. You can march. You can lay in the street. There's only one way to do it. Chapter 6 and 1. Hosea chapter 6, verse 1. Come and let us return unto the Lord. You know who that's supposed to be doing that? You men in the street. You're supposed to tell people, come, let's return unto the Lord. You want to fix it? That's the message that we got to convey to them. Why they out there getting their behinds killed, we got to show them, come and return to the Lord. Those are the prophets right there. So I want you to go back and read 15 into 6 and 1, and then we're finished. Hosea 5, 15. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face and their affliction. They will seek me early. The Lord said, in their affliction. His face is this Bible. This is how you're going to seek him. He said, in their affliction, they're going to begin to seek me. They're going to look, look for me. Why? How did that young man know he was a Jew? Do you know he knows it because of you all on the street teaching someplace? That's how he knows that, because of you. What you all doing out there? Read on. Come. And let us return unto the Lord, for we have torn 
and he will heal us. And we're going to tell this to the people. He has torn us, but he's going to heal us. When we explain what healing means, he's going to give us rulership. We got to set this in the minds of the young men that you have to. Everything else has failed. It's time for us to come back and return to the Lord. Let's finish this verse. He has smitten and he will bind us up. Okay. Let's go back over. We'll use that. Okay, good. Uh, Elder Kanai just mentioned, I heard it mentioned up here that you had white people that were laying down in the street blocking the bridges during the uh, protests and all that. And my question is, what did black people think about that? Because as we've been discussing, we often get mixed up when we see, uh, when we see white folks do this and we actually misidentify them as being on our side. Right. You don't realize that what is the reason why white folks would do that? Because a lot of people really are confused about this. Why would white folks actually do that? I just want to ask that question. Who could, who could tell me in just a few words? I'm not going to be long. Somebody stand up and tell me why would white people do this? Bezalel. I see everybody else is clueless. Bezalel, why? Why would white folks do this? Let me see because it's one answer. They're trying to confuse everybody by making it seem like it's not a racial thing. It's a people thing. So they involve themselves and make it seem like we're all equal when we're not. You didn't hit, you didn't hit it on the head. That's superficial. Sean, why would white folks do this? This is obvious. To befriend you and to keep you lost mentally. I like that better. Now let me, now let me explain it clearly. Because what what happened if white folks say, we ain't helping y'all at all, and just let black people fight their own battles? There's a fear that black people would tear up the whole damn country. Yes, right. If they tear up the whole damn country, white folks is out of business. So we're gonna, we're gonna act like we're joining you to bring things back to the good old American way. Soon as soon as you think you got a little bit of justice, they go right back to their lavish livings and everything else and things stay calm because they don't want stuff torn up. So that's the whole purpose of it. Our people are asleep. We really don't understand it. The whole, they, they're not supposed to be laying down on nothing. They're supposed to be in jail, every last one of them. Do y'all realize that? Every last white person in America is supposed to be in jail, all of them, even the ones being born in the hospitals. These are, because they, they are thieves. Y'all not, you're not understanding me. What in the world are they talking about injustice for when they are on stolen property? Y'all getting all mixed up in what, in what they are about. Go ahead, Elder. Give me uh, Deuteronomy 32, 36. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 36. For the Lord shall judge his people. So the Lord's going to judge us. We are his people. He's going to bring judgment upon us. Read. And repent himself for his servants. And he's going to repent himself for his servants. Because when you read Leviticus 25, 55, it says, The Israelites are my servants. Go ahead. When he seeth that their power is gone. When he sees that our power is gone. Like now, we have no power in this country. We have no military power. We have no economic power. We have no power at all here. Go ahead. And there is none shut up. And it don't, wait, wait. It don't matter you got your first black president. You got the attorney general, Eric Holder. You got senators and congressmen, black men, black women. It means nothing. Some chiefs of police are black. It means nothing. We are still a powerless people. Understand that. All that stuff with these figureheads, because that's all they are. They're like managers in a corporation. They are powerless. That's why Obama can't do nothing. Eric Holder can't. It's all garbage. It's to make the, you watch the TV go, look, we're going to get some help. And nothing comes of it. Nothing comes of it. Put you right back to sleep. Read that again. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants. Uh -huh. When he seeth that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. And there's none shut up or left. Go ahead. And he shall say, where are the gods? Where that, are their gods? This is what the Lord is saying to our people. Where are your gods? You've spent 400 years praying to the white Jesus. Where is he at to help you at? Where is he? Where is the Virgin Mary? Where is she to help you? Where is Allah? That rock, the Kaaba stone. Where is he? Read again. And he shall say, where are their gods? Their rock in whom they trusted. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. 
which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drink the wine of their drink offerings. Because in these churches, we offer sacrifices, drink offerings to the white image of Jesus, the Virgin Mary, and the temple to uh, the Kaaba stone. Go ahead. Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. Let white Jesus rise up and protect you. Let Mary rise up and protect you. Let Allah rise up and protect you. Go ahead. See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. So we have to understand that first and foremost. There's no other God but the Most High. Go ahead. I kill. I kill. So if there's death in the streets of New York, San Francisco, Ferguson, the Lord says, I kill. Meaning what? He's the one that gives the order. Kill that one. Now kill that one over there. Kill her too. That's the Most High's power. Go ahead. I kill and I make alive. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Nobody can deliver us out of the Lord's hands. Nobody. Go ahead. Give me a second. So let's read that verse again, verse 39. Deuteronomy 32, verse 39. See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that, de that can deliver out of my hand. That is going back to what we were reading earlier, that we keep on looking elsewhere, looking for help. And the Lord said, there's nobody else. I'm the one that gives life and takes life. We'll jump up in the chapter, read verse, one chance a thousand, et cetera, uh, verse 30. Verse 30. How shall one chase a thousand? And two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock had solid had sold them, and the Lord had shut them up. That's the most I turn his back on us. Read on. For their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. Because our rock is not like their rock. Our God is a real God. Even our enemies being judges of it know it. Did not Pharaoh acknowledge the Most High was the only power? Did not Nebuchadnezzar do it? Did not Antiochus Epiphanes do it? All nations know. That's the reason why they've changed the Bible. They've changed the images, I should say, at the Bible. They didn't want you to read because they understand that we have the true power. We have the true and the only God. But for some reason, we will still turn to our enemies and look for them for help. Go from there. You ready? Or can I go on? Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 40... 43, uh, Isaiah 43, verse 11. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 11. I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. So the Lord said, I, even I am the Lord, and beside me knows no Savior. Now we know Old Testament Israelites use this to say that Christ is not, you know, there's, there's no Christ. Why did God say that? Why, from what we just read before, why did God just say that? By show of hand, who knows? Give this brother the mic right here. Why would he say beside me there's no savior? Because he just said he makes, he makes alive and he kills. He dictates all of that. Okay, right, something else. Yeah, you, Ephraim. Uh, that's Archangel, right? Yeah, brother. Go ahead. I would say it's because it goes by his program, by uh, what he wants to One do. One more man. Go ahead. He said that because um, Israel, his people always tend to, to seek other gods for help. That's the reason why we tend to seek other gods. Now watch this. Uh, stay in the book of Ezekiel. I mean, uh, Isaiah. Go to Isaiah chapter... 30, 1, chapter 30. Didn't you read that earlier? 30, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Watch. It, read 30. I want you to read 30, verse 1 through 2. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 1. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel but not of me. That's all people. We take counsel today in what? Christianity, politics. We won't take counsel. The Bible says do. We will not do what the Bible says. So let's say, I'm going to turn my face from you. 
I'm going to let you get afflicted so much that you're going to finally, I'm going to break you down to powder till you accept that you need me. And then I'm going to help you. Read again. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit. Today that's Christianity and politics. We cover, we're looking for something, but in all the wrong places. Read on. That they may add sin to sin. Read. That walk to go down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. So today it's God bless America. I voted Republican this year. We're going to make a change. The Tea Party, New Party, we're going to change. The Lord said you walk down to Egypt. He said it's going to be a shame because you're going to trust them, but they're going to kill you in the streets. Watch this. Chapter 31 now. I want you to read verse 1. Isaiah 31 verse 1. As a matter of fact, I want to read it. 31 and 1. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong. It's not like people today trusting in the military right here. It says horsemen because they're very strong. But they look not to the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. Yet, also, yet he also is wise and will bring evil and will not call back his sword but will arise against the house of evildoers and against the help of them that work iniquity. So if you want to be joined to the enemy, most of us, I'm going to destroy them and I'm going to destroy you too. The same thing keeps on happening over and over. We're supposed to read these scriptures parallel with our lives today and realize let's not do this. Read on. I'll read them, sorry. Verse 3. Now the Egyptians are men and not God. That's one point I want. The Egyptians are men and not God. Why did he say that? He said back in 43, even I am the God and there's no savior behind me. Why you run to Egypt? Why do you run to America? Why do you keep on going to your enemies looking for them to help you? It says, for the Egyptians are not men, for the Egyptians are men and not God. Their horses are flesh and not spirit. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand both he that helpeth shall fall, and he that is hoping shall fall down, and they shall fail together. That's why it says, come out of America, Rev uh, Revelation 18. Come out of her, because you're going to fall with it. And until we get that, and all people understand that, there's still going to be death in this earth. Exactly. Can we get the next clip? Hello, everybody. I want to thank everybody for their support, for their continued support. And like Reverend said, this fight ain't over. It's just begun. I'm determined to get justice for my husband because he shouldn't have been killed in that way. He shouldn't have been killed in any way. Right. He should be here celebrating Christmas and Thanksgiving and everything else with his children and his grandchildren. And he can't. Why? Because a cop did wrong. Somebody that get paid to do right did wrong and he's not held accountable for it. Pause. Let me tell you something. You cannot be mad against racism and injustice, then turn around and celebrate racist, unjust holidays. That's contradiction. It makes no sense. What do I mean by that? All she said was Christmas and Thanksgiving. Can we get to scripture? Give me Jeremiah 10 real quick. Let's talk about Christmas for a second. What is, how is, is it the birth of Jesus? It ain't the birth of Jesus. Jeremiah 10, 1 through 4, please. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. So, learn not the way of the heathen. Come on. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. And don't worry about the signs in the heavens. Come on. For the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For the customs of the people are lies. That's what vain means. Read. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. Now it says one cuts a tree out of the forest. Go ahead. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. So he's describing Christmas here. He said don't learn that. Now let's precept that. Give me Revelation 11 and 10. Precept that with Revelation 11 and 10. For your you Christmas. It's for the children. Come on. Revelation chapter 11 verse 10. This is what they did to us. Watch this. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them. They rejoiced over us when they conquered us in slavery. And make merry. And make what? Merry. They made merry over us. And shall send gifts one to another. We were those gifts. Our sons and our daughters was the gifts 
on so-called Christmas. A lot of you don't know the history on that day. Oh, it's Jesus. They have just deceived our people. We was the merchandise. We were the gifts that they were giving. And they got movies on that. Okay, like, what's the name of the movie? Uncle Tom's Ca Farewell to Uncle Tom. Goodbye, Uncle Tom. Thank you. Where they showed the little boy as a gift for the little white girl. He had a chain on his neck. She's running down the street with him like a dog on a holiday. A lot of you don't know what that did to us on Christmas. If, if that's so hard to imagine, don't y'all, haven't y'all come across some of the records that say that a girl was given for a keg of molasses, another one for a bottle of wine and stuff like this? That means your, the value of you is no higher than a bottle of wine, a, a thing of rum. So don't they give rum on so-called Christmas? Yep. Don't they give wine on so-called? So what the hell make you think they didn't give you? Right. Don't they make merry? That's why they call it Merry Christmas. I'm glad that word's in the Bible. Read on, yeah. officer. Yeah, elder. Uh, yeah. I want to finish this verse. One sec. Go ahead. Because these two prophets tormented them. The two prophets that tormented them was Judah and Ephraim. Judah and Israel, the two kingdoms. That's what it's talking about. We didn't play with the other nations. When you read the book of Kings, we was destroying them. And we're going to do so again when we get our power back. Go ahead, Laba. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, Christmas is a ceremony. That's what a lot of our people don't understand. When you see they set up the big tree, they're doing ceremony right underneath the tree. You understand? You're thinking that it's something light. They just, they just put a tree there. It's nothing of it. It's a ceremony being made for the tree to be there every year. You understand? Be very mindful that we're not serving the devil. This place is of the devil. Everything about this place is of the devil. <laughs> what does ceremony mean? No one can hear a word you're saying. What does ceremony mean? Because Deacon Laba threw that word out there. How many can actually tell us what the word ceremony mean? See what I'm saying? Nope, just explain it. A ceremony is a ritual for a god or goddesses. Thank you. That's what it's talking about. Worship. Worship. Demonic worship, so you can understand. That's what Christmas is about. So-called Christmas is about. Right. Give me that scripture in Isaiah about they make a table to the truth. Where's that one at? Isaiah chapter 65 verse 11. But ye are they that forsake the Lord. Our people forsake the Lord. Go ahead. That forget my holy mountain. We forgot God's holy mountain, Zion. Go ahead. That prepare a table for that troop. We prepare a Thanksgiving table for the troop of whites that destroyed our people. That's what Thanksgiving is about. You're giving thanks and honor to the so-called white man destroying Israel and stealing this land. That's what the verse is talking about. Go ahead. And that furnish the drink offering unto that number. And we furnish a drink offering unto that number. Okay, this is some of the diabolical schemes that they have perpetuated against our people. And when you have a Merry Christmas, Happy Thanksgiving, she's talking about, where's my, can we go back a little bit? Let's listen to what she says again. He should be here celebrating Christmas and Thanksgiving and everything else with his children and his grandchildren. And he can't. Why? Because a cop did wrong. Somebody that get paid to do right did wrong, and he's not held accountable for it. But my husband's death will not be in vain. As long as I have a breath in my body, I will fight the fight to the end. Thank you. Mr. Pantaleo, for you and also for a family member, has offered his condolences. Will the family find it in their heart to accept it? Do you accept it? Hell no. The time for remorse would have been when my husband was yelling to breathe. That would have been the time for him to show some type of remorse or some type of care for another human right. being's life. When he was screaming 11 times that he can't breathe. So there's nothing that him or his prayers or anything else would make me feel any different. No, I don't accept his apology. No, I could care less about his condolences. No, I could care less. He's still working. He's still getting a paycheck. He's still feeding his kids. And my husband is six feet under. And I'm looking for a way to feed my kids now. Anyone else? 
You know who, All right, thank who, you very who's much. Who's going to play Santa Claus for my grandkids this year? Because he plays Santa Claus for my grandkids. Who's going to do that now? So what do you want to happen to him? What do you want? You know who, All right, thank who, you very who's much. Who's going to play Santa Claus for my grandkids this year? Because he plays Santa Claus for my grandkids. Who's going to do that now? That just ruined the whole thing. ruined everything. I said that's it. Thank you. You see the, the 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 mindset of our people is just sick. That's you know what on our, we need shirts that say, "Don't celebrate their holidays." Just that. Don't celebrate. That's a protest. How about when we become born again, we pull out of? Give me that Revelation eighteen four. Give me that. Don't celebrate their holidays, because these are their holidays. They're not biblical. Go ahead. Revelation chapter eighteen verse four. And I heard a, a voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. So God is telling you, don't celebrate their holidays. So what is wrong with blacks and Latinos? We no justice, no peace. Where's my Santa Claus? Who going to play Santa Claus? You are stupid as hell. Go ahead. Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins. See that? That you be not partakers of her sins. Every holiday America has is based upon white supremacy. It's an oppressive holiday. All their holidays. Every last one of them. Well, somebody right now, what about Valentine's Day? That's about orgies. Adultery. Fornication. Why are you celebrating that? Female worship. Yeah. Female worship. Buy the, buy the hoe some candy. She's going to give you some. Why are you honoring that thing? Keeps AIDS and the, the uh, uh, herpes simplex 19 alive. We got to kill that thing. God says, come out and read it again. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. See that? The plagues is death. When you partake in America's celebrations, the plague you get is death. Now, the ultimate death is that missile that's going to come hit this place. Our people must learn this Bible truth. We've never done it before. We've tried politics. We've tried these false religions. We've never tried what this Bible says. Never. This is a new day in the earth. A new day. Yes. The greatest piece of video that I saw so far today was when that brother told that so-called Jew that he was not the Jew. That he said that I am the Jew. Because that right there shows you how far the work that's being done is going. It's showing the prophecies of God in full effect. That's what it's showing. That's what it's illuminating. It's enlightening to me. Because I'm looking at it and I said, wow, our works is getting there. The works of the Most High is actually working and getting out and waking our brothers and sisters up. That's the beautiful thing about it. Once we begin to wake up, you don't have... Our people are talking about Christmas and like this foolishness that we just watched just a minute ago. The reason why our people talk this way is because our, the, our base is missing. Our nationality is gone. We don't know who we are. We're really just a, a, a clone of a nation. We don't really have the real substance of who we are. And all of the nations are laughing at us, making mockery out of us, doing all kinds of things, uh, just belittling us and all kinds of things. Why? Because the true essence of us has not risen. When I saw that one brother, he is the example of, of the true identity coming back. And he was able to stand on his own two feet and tell that Edomite, you're not the Jew. And believe me, that bastard is going to go back to his office and he's going to talk about what we need to do because this truth is getting ready to tear everything up. You're right, 100% right. That's the real conversation that's going on behind closed doors. That's right, believe it, brother. Because of that one brother. Get 1 Corinthians 6 and 17. So we got to come out of them. We got to stop celebrating their holidays. That is a protest. Our power is... Our power, brothers and sisters, is repentance. That's our power right there. When we keep God's commandments, that is power. Give me that real quick. Give me that. Give me that. Zechariah 4 and 6. Your marching does nothing. Your voting does nothing. What else do they do? You laying on the street, blocking traffic does nothing. You walking around for three hours with your hands held in the air does nothing. Except get your arms tied. Right. That's all it does. Give me that Zechariah 4 and 6. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. 
Oh, you burning down your own house don't help either. Now you're just homeless. You burning down the corner, the, the, the grocery store does not neither. Now you ain't got no place to buy your food at. Come on. Zechariah 4 verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might. Not by might. Nor by power. Nor by power. But by my spirit. But by my spirit. Saith the Lord of hosts. That's our power. The spirit of God, which is this Bible. Once we do this, everybody going to take notice of this thing. Listen, brothers, what I'm telling you, you have the greatest power in your hand. Live it. Apply what you're learning here. Your gun ain't going to help. Your little knife, switchblade ain't doing nothing. You're going to get shot in the street and killed. But changing the hearts and minds of the people is what this nation fears, what America fears. They fear a repentant people. Give me that now. Uh, they fear when we woke up. Revelation 11 and 14, somewhere around there. It's been a while, been a while. It said great fear fell upon them that saw them. You think they're afraid because you're laying in the street? No, they're going to run your black behind over. You think they're afraid because you're walking around with your hands up in the air for 12 hours? No, you're just tired. You think they're afraid because you're walking around. Uh, what else are they doing, these black people? Don't you don't follow them? What verse is it, Officer Leon? Like verse 12, right? Revelation 11, verse 11. All right, thank you. And after three days and a half. Meaning 350 years. This is the time period we're living in. Come on. The spirit of life from God entered into them. This is what you see here. The spirit of life from God entering into us. Us coming back to the truth that we're the Israelites. That we're the sons and daughters of God Almighty. The children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Solomon, David, Peter, and Paul. We are that race. Go ahead. And they stood upon their feet. You see that? And they stood upon their feet. That's what we're doing now. Standing up for what the Bible says. Right. And that, that's what that brother did. Go that ahead. brother we saw in the video. Go right. ahead. And great fear. And what? Great fear fell upon them with saw them. See, that's where the fear. You think the fear is you running through the streets burning everything down? No. I'm going to tell you what burning does. This is why people do it. Let, let the niggas burn. They sit back and watch you. They're burning everything down. Then they say, Charlie, they burned down the city. They say, all right, we're all out in the suburbs. They burn where they live down. Let's give it seven years before we rebuild. Now all the black people crying, no justice. Where are we going to live? What are we going to do? That's what they, I see how they, you got to examine history. Places that our people have burned down, the white man steps back and let it stay like that, desolate for years. And they are in the suburbs. I, I look at some dumb people. Who are the black leaders out there? Because they're dumb as hell. And they don't lose nothing. You burn it down and they collect insurance. There you go. Thank you. Nothing. They collect that insurance money. So you ain't, do, you ain't put no fear in nobody like that. You're just going to get locked up, shot. But the fear, Officer Leon, one more again. Let's hear the fear. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. And they stood upon their feet. And great fear fell upon them which saw them. That's your power, brothers. Sisters, that's your power. I got to say it. The great fear fell on that so-called Jew when that black man told him that he was a Jew. Exactly. Great fear fell on him. Why? Because all of the, the, the United States of America and every nuance of this country is about keeping you from finding out just what that brother said. So he defied the whole country. Exactly. He defied all of their efforts to keep him dumb. He, he defied all of their efforts with their Christmas music, the turkeys and all that garbage. He defied all of that. The educational system, all of that. He defied it all by saying, I'm the Jew. Exactly. So that put great fear on them. They said, we got a problem. Houston, we, we have got a, a problem. real problem. <laughs> That's what's going on. I'm going to show you that. Now, you may be saying, like we tell you, words got power. Give me that, officer. First Corinthians 1 about my words. Give me that. Maybe I got the wrong chapter, but it just popped into my head. The most I said, use my words, it's the foolishness of preaching, that one. Come on. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse... 21? Is it 21? 21, yeah. For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God... Here it comes. ...by the foolishness of preaching... By the foolishness of preaching... ...to save them that... Believe. To save them that belief. That's the power. Now let me show you. Deacon Yawasub said, that young man just saying, I'm the real Jew and you're not. There's power in that. 
Let me show you something. Give me, the, give me that Jeremiah 5.14. Let me show you all something. I, need, I got to help you all with that. You think that stick in your hand or that switch blade got there ain't no power in that. But watch this. Is that what I want? You know what, Jeremiah 5.14? Yes. Watch this. Here you go. Jeremiah 5 verse 14. Wherefore thus saith the Lord God of hosts, because you speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire. What? Fire. The word of God in your mouth is fire. It's going to burn everything. Up. Watch this. Come on. And this people would. And this people would. You know, what does fire do to wood? Burns. Burn, baby, burn. So you don't understand. Give me that. Was it more? And it shall devour them. And it shall devour them. Let me show you that example. Of that. Give me Daniel eleven fourteen. He said, all he said was, I'm the real Jew. Watch this. Daniel eleven fourteen. Daniel 11, verse 14. Here come. Watch this. And in those times... There shall many stand up against the king of the south. The king of the south is the Ptolemaic family. Go ahead. Also. Here come. This is what I want. Watch. The robbers of thy people. Also the robbers of thy people. Those that stole your nationality. Shall exalt themselves. They shall exalt themselves as the Jews upon earth. To establish the vision. To establish the vision that they are the Jews. But. But. They shall fall. They shall fall. That's the prophecy. That is the pro That's why out of all that first clip, none of what was said in that first clip mattered except the last few seconds where he said, I'm the real Jew and you're not. That's all. And it, was, it wasn't just that. He said, see all these black people, he pointed. He said, right. see all these black folks here? These are Jews. You ain't no Jew. Now, he, what? he pointed to himself and he pointed to his people. Yeah. Right. He got to play a part of it. He, he pointed to himself first. And his people, and he knows that's South, that's um, what we call that Un unity right there, unity. Right. right let, me, let, me, let me show you the danger in what he just said, because that's exactly what happened when he said that. And all of them are Jews too. The thing that went through that white man's head, that Edomite's head, who said, "Well, if you know that they're the Jews and they don't know, that means you're going to be telling them." That's a problem. That's a problem right. because if he's saying that, he's saying, "I know I'm the Jew, and they're the Jews, right. and they don't know yet." So that means I have to tell them. So you mean, listen to this. So That's you mean right. to tell me That's right. that the first few minutes when everybody's saying the white man is the devil, that didn't mean shit. That didn't, mean, that didn't mean nothing. It meant nothing. They, they'll put you on TV. You can say that all day long. Right. Pay your honorariums when you go to these colleges and all that. Mm -hmm. Let you get up there and call them the devil all day long. But that thing that he said there, that's not going to get much airplay. Right. You notice that that was YouTube that they had the clip on. That wasn't on ABC News like what we just saw with this woman. She was on ABC News. I just saw the clip. Right, but they put it in the article. They, it was in the article, and it circulated. It went viral. The, so this black man said yeah, he's a Jew. That's yeah. right. It went viral. Wow. That thing went like fire. Most High got his hand in this whole thing. Y'all gotta look at this. You getting mad? What's Most High said? Listen, I got this. Let me do this. Y'all just learn my word, and I got I got the rest. Just sit back, brothers. That thing went sit viral. Sit back huh? and wait. A sit super back. virus. Exactly. <laughs> G give me that. No, give me that in Romans three. Romans chapter wait, 3. Wait, 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 wait. Start at 1. Start at 1, yeah. Romans 3 and 1. What advantage then have the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way. You have an advantage in all ways being the Jews. Go ahead, me, being the Israelites. Come on. Chiefly. Mainly. Because that unto them. Be, chiefly because unto you Israelites. Were committed the oracles of God. The Bible is your book. That's telling you right there, the Bible is not for all nations. The Bible was given to the Jews. You let these wh white society fool you, said the Bible's for everybody. That's not what we just read. Read that again, please. Much every way, chiefly, because that to them were committed the oracles of God. The Bible, read. For what if some did not believe? What if some of y'all don't believe this? Go ahead. Share their unbelief. Make the faith of God without effect. So because your mothers and fathers doubt this, does that mean the prophecies ain't going to happen? Go ahead. God forbid. No. Go ahead. Yay. Let God be true. Let God be true, meaning let the Bible be true. But every man, a liar. If you ain't speaking what this Bible says, you are a liar. You must come out of the book. I'm telling you, this book is the book of life. Understand that. This book has been around way before you. It's going to be here today and after you're gone too. This is the book. This is God's word. Y'all men understand that? I don't know.
Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.